Hey guys, uh, I just wanted to record this um, le mini lecture that I did today for you guys, just in case you needed uh, information for notes or for any uh, quizzes or anything like that. Um, and also good information for you to have um, overall. So um, this is just going to go over the things that we already discussed in class today um, on minerals. This is the beginning of week number four. Here are the five characteristics of all minerals. Um, number one, they naturally occur. There's nothing non-natural going around them. They always occur through a process that is natural, like volcanism, or through plate tectonics, or through uh, a, sol a solution solute uh, situation where the water cycle gets involved. And I'll discuss that with you later. Um, they are uh, number two, inorganic, meaning that there's no organics nearby. There's nothing that's going to come in contact with them to stop them, prevent their growth. Um, so they are always inorganic. There's there's no plant, animal, um, biological life around at all. Um, there's no bacteria, there's no archaea, there's none of that stuff. Uh, number three, they always occur in nature in solid. We as humans can manufacture them into liquids and gases, but in nature they're always solid, usually crystalline type structure. Um, number four, they come up in a definite chemical composition, meaning they're made up of one or more atoms, um, but they are in a uh, crystalline lattice formation where these, will, uh, these, these atoms will repeat themselves in a tessellating fashion. So in the case of like, say, gold, you would have a gold atom that repeats itself over and over in a certain fashion to uh, create the, um, what we see of as, uh, as gold. Um, and in the case of, say, something that has multiple atoms in it, like, uh, like table salt, you have sodium and you have chlorine, similar to this guy right here, um, where you have your sodium, which is, would be the silver, and the chlorine, which is the green, and you see them in a definite repeating pattern Either you see it as a diagonal or you see it as a set of green uh, chlorine surrounding the silver or the silver sodium surrounding the green chlorine. Or even if you block one side off, you could just see kind of like the zigzag right there. But you could also see that it occurs throughout the entire um, structure and shape of this um, uh, se section of sodium chloride. This is table salt. This is the structure of table salt. And notice it's also a cube. Um, so that when you take a look at the table salt that you spill on the table uh, at home or whatever, also notice that that is cubic in fashion too. Again, there also come in other crystalline shapes similar to this crystal, which is hexagonal uh, in shape, has six sides. So um, uh, the uh, definite chemical composition, one or more types of atom that repeat themselves in a tessellating pattern. Those are the five different uh, characteristics naturally occurring inorganic, solid, definite chemical compound and uh, atoms arranged in a tessellating pattern. Um, there is also a test that we do that we're gonna experience here with minerals. And this test uh, is to test the hardness and uh, to actually identify minerals. Um, we test things like color. It's important to know that color is the least useful in testing minerals because it tells us the least amount about them. But it still is a characteristic that we, a characteristic that we need to identify. Uh, there is streak, luster, luster shininess, density, how many atoms are in the object, um, cleavage, um, well, how many atoms, density, how many atoms are in the object per cubic centimeter, um, cleavage uh, or fracture, not both, but one or the other, and then the crystal system as well, which is what I just showed you and talked about. Um, so those are the way that we test for mineral identification. We're going to do that uh, at some point next week. Formation, is, this is the important part. Um, that I wanted to get across to you guys here because uh, I'm not sure the notes did it justice, but I'm gonna go ahead and share with you this set of images on um, giant crystals. Take a look at these giant crystals. These giant crystals, these are individual crystals. They go, um, they start off at, a, at a, a certain point and they can continue on individually following that same crystalline pattern over and over again. These crystals took millions of years to form, um, took millions of years to form uh, under the earth in isolated uh, caverns where there is no organics. There's no biologics there. The only thing that is there is just the right conditions for these crystals to form. It took millions of years under uh, high pressures and high temperatures. Um, you can see in this example and in this example, there are individuals and they're wearing these temperature pressure, pressure, temperature pressure suits that allow them to stay in there for hours at a time. If you stayed in there for longer without those suits, uh, it, would, it would definitely do uh, a, lot of, a lot of damage to you. And that's a lot of damage. Um, 
So uh, these are large crystals, individual structures, individual crystals that took millions of years to form. On the other hand, there is this, which is obsidian. And obsidian is a uh, type of rock. It's an igneous rock that is a uh, made up of trillions and trillions and trillions of crystals. Because these crystals did not have the millions of years to form that those underground crystals did. These uh, atoms formed, uh, crystals formed over many minutes or even in some cases seconds because they what happens is lava gets ejected out of the uh the, the uh, volcano and as it's going through our atmosphere by the way global temperature worldwide is about 59 degrees um in the atmosphere as this goes through the atmosphere it's cooling down rapidly the lava uh, cools down it doesn't allow the atoms to form a large crystal structure or a large crystal chain um, in some cases only allows a couple of atoms per crystal so in this, you end up with trillions of smaller crystals that you couldn't see with any microscope that we have on our campus. You'd have to get an electron scanning microscope to see them, but there are trillions of crystals in here. Took seconds to minutes to form. These crystals took millions of years to form. These are individual crystals, not trillions, but one individual crystal forming the same pattern over and over again. I say this, there are two ways that crystals form, but they form in pretty different ways through naturally occurring processes. The third type, uh, the third way that they form, or another way that they form, stop sharing, yes. Another way that they form is uh, through a solution type of uh, mixture. You get a super saturated solution. What I did here is I took um, a, I just uh, boiled some water and I got uh, sodium bicarbonate, which is just baking soda pretty much. And I added it to the boiling water, stirred it around until the uh, solution could no longer hold any more of uh, the baking soda or the sodium bicarbonate. And then I took some of that, poured it in this Petri dish and over a period of about a month, it all evaporated off and it left uh, these crystals the way that you would find it uh, naturally. You can see they're kind of veiny, kind of uh, spiry, very thin straight lines in some pla in many places. And then I also have an example here of calcium chloride, stuff that I used in Idaho when I lived there to keep ice off of the sidewalks. Very similar to table salt. Um, let's see if I can get the right angle here. Now you can kind of see it there. Uh, okay, so anyhow, you can see they form much larger crystals than this one um, uh, because it's been given about a month uh, for the water to evaporate off and form those crystals. This is a third uh, type of crystal that I was able to form. This one is copper bisulfite. Um, it forms, where's the good piece? It forms uh, kind of when you put it in the water, it has this kind of uh, yellowish, whitish look to it. Um, you mix it with the water, create the super solution, it evaporates off, and it creates these blue crystals like this. They're kind of trapezoidally uh, shaped crystals. They're almost two dimensional. They're pretty darn flat, but you can see there that they form a three dimensional structure. They're repeating over and over. It took about a month for that to form. And those, uh, and that's the third way where you take uh, a solution of water. The uh, solution, not necessarily of water, the liquid evaporates off and the rest of it, then uh, the heavier mineral stays to the bottom, cr crystallizes. And uh, that's also how you have uh, a lot of the salt on your table is a very same process. Um, so that's pretty much what we went through, folks. Um, I'll see you uh, tomorrow, the next next mini lecture that I post. Have a great day, guys.